Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're upgrading our Nintendo Zapper. That's coming up. What's up you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is going to share with you something that we have received that we think is incredible. Do you remember that custom Star Wars character that we showed you a few weeks back? Where we turned an average Halloween costume mask into a full-blown Star Wars character? Well, our friend Jeremy at Plastic Surgeon Designs brought us this. Yep, it's a custom-made figure based on our Star Wars character. He took inspiration from our design and made a figure head to toe and it's outstanding. The details in this figure literally had me jumping up and down like it was Christmas morning. So if you're not following Plastic Surgeon Design on Instagram, then we put a link in the description below so that you can check out all the other amazing stuff that Jeremy's doing over there. And again, Jeremy, thank you so much for this incredible gift. Now, thanks to his artistry, we were inspired to build a prop from this figure his blaster. In the figure's hand is clearly a fantastic space blaster and it just so happened that we had what I felt was the perfect base to build this from. That's right, a Nintendo zapper gun and many of ducks have I slayed with this particular weapon. But now it's time to transform this into something more fitting of our current needs. The best part is you can find zapper guns like this on Amazon or on eBay for around $10, and I've seen them as low as $5. And yes, I realize for you Nintendo collectors, this vintage piece might seem like sacrilege to use as a modded weapon, but it's just begging to be turned into a Star Wars blaster, so let's not waste any more time and get after it. Now for our build, I chose to use the classic gray zapper gun instead of this orange one. The original looks better and has a better overall feel, not just in the handle, but in the overall construction, it's less cheap. I also purchased a pair of BB gun scopes from Amazon for $8 a piece. So not counting any hardware, paint, or other materials like Greeblies, all in, you can build this for less than $30. From a construction aspect, this build is completely straightforward and the only limitations are your imagination. There are a few things I did right out of the gate and that was remove the power cord and any electronics inside that are unnecessary. By the way, pro tip, if you don't have one of these little magnetic trays in your prop building arsenal, then you need to get one. I use them constantly when I'm working on projects. One thing I noticed about the classic zapper gun is that the builders actually added weights inside. This gives it heft and really good balance. It doesn't just feel like an empty piece of plastic. When working with the scopes, I removed the adjustment dials. They were a little bit bulky and I wanted to have a cleaner look to the scopes. Now when Jeremy created the action figure, the actual blaster has dual scopes and we wanted to replicate that. Now in order to do that, I wanted to have a mechanical attachment to the actual zapper gun. And mechanical means that you actually screw it in place versus it being glued. This will give it a lot of rigidity and also allow you to take it apart in the future if you ever need to. All right, little smuggler safety tip here for you. When I drilled into the zapper gun, I had the scope mount braced firmly against it, but I was drilling towards my hand. If anything would have slipped, I would have jammed the drill bit right into my palm, which obviously is not the intent. In hindsight, I wish I would have marked it, then put it into a vise, drilled through the zapper gun, and then assembled it. So not following me on this would be a pretty good idea. So when I drilled through the scope mount and into the zapper gun, I used a drill bit with a smaller diameter than the bolt I was going to use. The reason for this is I was able to use the soft aluminum and the plastic to actually create threads as I screwed the bolt down tight. Now, I wasn't sure if this was going to work 100%, but after screwing it down, it was incredibly tight and the bond was perfect. Now, in order to paint the zapper, we need to sand off all of the labels and markings on the zapper gun as well as give a little bit of a tooth on the plastic for the paint to cling on to. 
I used 600 grit sandpaper and it worked perfectly for this. Now I'm pretty sure I've never mentioned the use of tack cloths on any of our episodes, but it is a perfect asset for a prop maker. You can use it to get all the fine dust and little bits off of whatever project you're working on and preparing it for paint so that you have a clean surface. Now the biggest aspect of this project is the paint. So enough jibber jabber and let's just airbrush this bad boy. Once you finish the paint job, all you need to do now is assemble all of your parts. And once we get all the parts put back on the zapper gun, it's time to start adding some greeblies. We don't wanna to go too crazy here, but we wanna dive into our greebly bin and find a few bits and pieces that are gonna help tell more of a story and give this a great in-universe look. All told, this blaster project took me about five hours from start to finish, including time for the paint to dry. And we took the base of a zapper gun and completely transformed the look all around. Overall, I'm really stoked at how well this turned out. And I think it's a pretty fair representation of the blaster that our action figure is holding that we got from Plastic Surgeon Designs. Thank you again, Jeremy, for the inspiration on that. And I hope you will try to go out and convert a zapper gun into your own blaster. And if you do, please tag us. Please share those photos and let us know how your progress went. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you next time when we build something out of nothing.